be autistic college cybersecurity fag. Never been to social gatherings in my life. Come on and on it'll be fun go to the party we can land some hot bitches. Guy offers cocaine. Sniff.exe. Suddenly feel like how I think I am supposed to feel at the party enter chad mode. Get addicted to chad mode but only party on the weekends. Start to feel very lazy during the week. Friend offers Vivance, similar to long-release Adderall, but 100% D-amphetamine. Eat.exe. Suddenly feel like a genius who can grind work for 48 hours straight. Continue semester high as fuck on Vivance and smoking weed all the time literal chad mode. Lose virginity and unironically feel normal for the first time. Huge attention from all the girls and guys all the time, never had friends in high school. Constantly going around to chill aka smoke weed and drink. Always high on Vivance because it made me feel like God mode. Put off all work until the last few days of semester. Oh shit nigger.png. Go on a Vivance slash Adderall, had to start taking whatever prescriptions I could get my hands on, binge. Sat in our school's forensics lab for around 48 hours grinding out the semester's work. End up doing fine A's and B's, but at what cost? Have to present an English class the next day. No I am too cracked out to do this with anxiety slash paranoia through the ceiling between the stimulants and no sleep. Friend offers me Xanax. Eat.jpeg now is when things start to get interesting. Finally able to sleep like a normal person. Quickly become heavily reliant on Xanax to get any sort of sleep. Start to rely on Xanax to function normally around others without seeming like a crackhead or at least just having my inhibitions lowered enough that I didn't notice. Literally start to refer to myself as a walking god to other people. At this point my diet consists of chocolate milk, Xanax, and whatever amphetamines aka Vivance Adderall Ritalin. Run out of Xanax. Can't find anyone to buy it from in the entire town, this is when it was first becoming very popular to abuse. Have heard about these dark webs and used it once to buy acid with great success. Extremely desperate to find any sort of benzo. The withdrawal was pretty bad, especially with the major abuse of amphetamines to go along with it. Think laying in bed so tired that you can't move, but your brain just keeps racing with painful thoughts. Turn 50 bucks I could scrounge together into BTC and order 1 gram of alprazolam powder, the active ingredient in Xanax pills, note. 2 milligrams equals 1 Xanax pill, so 1 gram of powder equals 500 pills. Get zero sleep for about a week as we wait for the shit to come, roommate was basically in the same position I was in at this point. Roommate also doesn't believe you can get drugs from the internet. Three or four days later. Small package comes. Roommate and I are literally hysterically yelling like retards as we open it. Mission success dot doc. Realize we just got the equivalent to 500 Xanax bars, it was actually way more, worth of active ingredient for $40 or so. We were paying around 7 to 10 per bar from people with scripts, and the whole town was desperately looking for more. Businesstime.gif. Realize we have to find a way to accurately dose the powder for resale, 2 milligrams of powder is basically a single grain of sand. Start to read into our options. Basically the only way to measure accurately will be to put the powder into a solution, and then measure volumetrically. Get a 750 milliliters of Everclear. Mix our powder into it and heat it up. Now we have 2 milliliters equals 2 milligrams solution of alprazolam. Start to sell the shit into these little plastic capsules, think a gel cap but plastic and a little bigger. Charge 5 bucks a pop undercutting any real bars sales, and either way people were desperate they would take anything they can get. It's a huge hit. Two months later, and the entire town is hooked on these little caps of alprazolam solution. Have one main guy that was a friend selling most of them. Things are good as a college sofa more my roommate and I basically have as much cash as we need, and the dirty whores love us because dirty whores love drugs. Next up I meet this fella who seemed strange from the start, sort of looks like a nerdy Ari Jules if you can picture it. He starts to talk to me and says he has lots of clients looking for pills and stuff. But he doesn't want the liquid he needs the real pills. Well I've got the liquid stuff. Yeah, but where do you get that stuff you must have a good connection man. Tell him about the dark web and silk road. He shows me some old sites where he used to buy pills from India on the clear net. Ask him why he stopped doing that. 
says they set him up and he got caught, spent a year in federal prison for something like 1,000 clonopins. Tell him yeah well that's why you need to use the dark web it's safer no one can track you. Remember folks I'm high on Xanax 24-7 the alarms that are going off in your head like danger do not exist in my head at the time. Tell him okay I will look into it. Also ask him if he can sell other stuff. Yeah whatever bro just get the bars quick I can sell as many as you can get. Get some bars from online. Now if you are not familiar with the Silk Road etc. Pressed bars are basically when someone buys the raw alprazolam powder and makes homemade Xanax bars using a pill press, filler powder, lubricating powder, and the active ingredient. They are basically knockoff bars. Sell the kid 50 bars as a test, and he says his people love them. The kid paid B250 for the bars, and I paid around 100 he also says he can move as many as I can get my hands on. We gonna get rich.mov. Also tell the kid I have some coke. He asks if it's good and I say yes, I had no clue I didn't know shit about it at the time. He buys it and asks if it's alright if he does it in my apartment. Breaks out a needle and for the first time I watch someone shoot a drug into their vein very skived out because he pokes himself at least 10 times before he finds a good spot. He says the coke is shit and I try to act tough like no refunds. He pulls out a gun and points it at me. Okay okay bro chill I thought it was good, but I guess not man. We awkwardly are all good after that he says no biggie like it's no big deal to aim a pistol at someone's head. Let me know when you get more bars. Now in the dark web the bar makers come and go because they either get caught or exit scam, think a rug pull, take the money and run style. At this point there were no trustworthy people to buy the fake bars from for cheap. See Molly for ridiculously cheap. Think it has to be fake or something so I look into it. It's not fake it just comes from across the border in Europe, so there is risk of customs finding it on the way in. Also note by this point I am literally making my own alprazolam vape juice and vaping Xanax, so to speak still not sure on how effective that is, but the vaporization point was in range of the temp that the vape got, so it surely had some effect. Zero fear or feelings of danger. Order 50 grams of molly from Germany. Wait two weeks. Package arrival.avi. Now I paid maybe 1k for this 50 grams of molly. Sells for $100 per g easily locally. Do the math and I realize the potential I was seeing for a young dumb college kid this was like the jackpot. Sell some to friends and locals, then go to the other guy with an ounce and ask him if he can sell it. You only have one ounce bro? I could sell way more. All I've got. Okay well I've got a plan I've got an XGF that will buy an ounce easy for 1200, but here's the thing we are just gonna rob her, so then we can sell the ounce to my other dude. Fuck that bitch she's a whore, you want to fuck her first. Fuck that bitch. Um no thanks. Okay well I'll set up the deal, then you do the deal with her, and when the drugs and money are out I'll come in and rob the place. Be me waiting to sell this Asian girl an ounce of MDMA. Other guy is going to barge in and rob us. Asian bitch finally shows up. Tries to flirt and act slutty to knock a few bucks off the price I assume. Not interested. JPEG she pays me and walks out. Other guy never robs us in fact he is nowhere to be found. Doesn't answer phone calls or anything for at least a week after. Don't really care since I got the money. Put the money from that, the liquid Xanax vials, and the other bar sales together, and it's enough for a kilo of MDMA, around 9k United States dollars at the time. Now I had been using local Bitcoin to buy Bitcoin by sending money grams to the Philippines. How that was profitable for them I don't really know, but I assume it has something to do with their country being broke, so their time is basically worthless anyway. The problem is this does not work for anything over 1k, at the time. Now remember this was a time when it was still pretty tough to buy bitcoins, so I had to make multiple buys with multiple accounts to get enough bitcoin for the transaction. Would have to go to Walmart with three different people to send money grams, then go to another Walmart to send more. Eventually had converted the cash to bitcoin and found the guy selling the MDMA, who said he could get 1 kilo through customs for roughly 9k dollars, note by this time customs started catching on to all the drugs coming from Germany and people started getting packages seized and houses raided for large amounts. Start feeling a little fear from reading the house raid horror stories, but the money is too enticing, 1 kilo of molly equals 1000 grams and grams were going for $100 each minimum at that time, so you do the math. 
wait two weeks. Still taking the liquid Xanax and getting fucked up all the time with my roommate. Decide it's party time as we just finished finals. Take molly and 10 tabs of acid. Sit down in a beanbag chair. Oh shit nigger.exe. Sit there in that chair suffering from such extreme paranoia throughout the entire night. Think every door opening or closing is the feds busting down my door. I am frozen in fear in the most literal sense. All I can imagine is the SWAT team busting down my door. Friend tries to keep feeding my Xanax to help me come back to sanity. For some reason I keep refusing to take it. Next thing I remember I wake up in a hospital bed with an IV drip in my arm. Start to wake up and panic, but they knock me back out cold. Wake up again and this time my roommate is there so I am more relaxed. They tell me I had a seizure that could be due to a multitude of factors including anxiety and stress, but the withdrawal from not taking any benzos for 12 hours is what made me susceptible to the seizure. Start to worry about the cops and the package. Friend tells me it's all good there are good Samaritan laws in the state, and the cops there don't really care about drugs much anyway. A little shaken up I go to message the guy, the deal was through email, at that time no one was using the dark web markets because of all the exit scams. He tells me it is okay bro package just takes time they cannot do anything to rush it, the more they check on it, the more suspicion is raised. After the hospital I am somewhat sobered up and I realize I should clean house just in case. Heavily encrypt laptop I was using as well. No drugs in the apartment. Come home from class one day. Roommate says he got the package, you have no choice but to sign for it. Open package. There is a giant container that says a bunch of shit in Dutch. Looks like a giant tub of skin cream or something. Open. Inside is a giant cylinder with the consistency of wax. Are you fucking kidding me? Rage. Instantly go to message the guy empty threats dumb idea to scam me, he could have made a lot more than 9k from me in the long run etc. Realize I was an idiot for sending some guy 9k directly through the internet with zero possible recourse if he scams me. Become depressed. Check the email the next day to see what his reply is. Use a hammer and break it open bro lol don't worry you are not the first one to have this problem. The giant rock of MDMA is sealed inside the giant cylinder of wax. Open the vac seal. Whole building starts to smell like molly. My roommate and I were rolling just from being in the room holy fuck it all worked out. Try to get into contact with the other guy. Now so you can imagine it was basically just a giant rock about half the size of a bowling ball. The other guy is impossible to get a hold of. Try to talk to his friend to find out what happened to him. Says he has no clue, but what am I trying to move maybe he can help. Oh, Molly, huh? I may know some people who are down with that. Tells me he has four people who will go in on a quarter pound of molly, so an ounce each for 900. The sun is setting and I'm walking down the main street in the town college street, with a giant jacket on, and four separately bagged ounces of molly in my hand pockets. I have no clue who these people are, but the guy that I barely know said they were cool. My phone ends up dying before I get there, and I know I am close, but I have no clue which house it is. Knock on someone's door to charge my phone at their house. Have a quarter pound of molly in my pockets but no problem, play it cool. Get to the right house and everything goes well. The guys give me the money and receive the drugs. Bro what the fuck you trying to short us? The scale says something like 27.5 grams. Tell him to fuck off it probably fell on the floor. Leave. Do the calculations after I get home. Just made around 5k in one deal. Feeling very ecstatic whether it be from the profit or handling the molly likely both. Receive a call from other number on my burner phone. It's G. G is the other main guy. I've got about a key of M can you move it? Don't talk on the phone retard I will come by. He hangs up and I wait for him to come by. After three days he shows up and starts yelling at me. Molly what the fuck bro I said bars you expect me to just move whatever shit for you bro are you fucking kidding? Just keeps yelling bars bars get it through your head for about one minute straight. Try to calm him down tell him look we can both make a lot on this, I got it for a good price, of course I tell him double of what I actually paid, but this is just standard practice in the business. He begrudgingly agrees to set up a deal. A key of molly for roughly 32k to me. Tells me a date and time we will all meet in my apartment. Ok see you then. Yells at me more to get bars because he can move as many and blah blah blah. 
Fast forward about a week. Now remember that other friend I told you about earlier, the one who was selling a couple bars for me here and there. We also partied together a lot he was like a buddy in the sense we got fucked up together a lot. I also always convinced him he was killing me whenever I sold shit to him, even though I was charging 3 to 4x, so he basically loved me. This guy will come into play later. The day of the deal. It's 9am and G shows up and we make a plan about the deal. He gives me a gun and never having held a gun in my life, let alone shot one I take a gun and stuff it in my waistline. Now we wait for the dude to show up. Up comes this giant ginger guy who looks like a complete hippie pretty much the opposite of intimidating. Relax.exe. We get into the room and I show him the stuff and he shows the money. We make him lay it all out on the floor in stacks of 1k so we can count it. Tell everyone I also got some of this other ketamine fresh in and it's really good. Now if you never did a drug deal when you are just meeting someone new and they offer you drugs, you basically have no choice but to take it. It is law. So we all snort a good line of ketamine, then get back to counting. All hell starts to break loose as it kicks in. He demands we rescale the molly which takes us ages, as the scale only goes up to 50 grams, so we have to weigh it in 20 different batches, and it is impossible to keep track of how much we've already weighed out. Eventually we start writing it down every time and adding it all up in a calculator. Okay guys we did it let's take another line of ketamine. Sniff.mp3. So he's got the bag of molly and on the floor, there are 40 or so stacks of $120 bills, all in $1000 stacks. Knock.jpg friend I talked about earlier busts in, he was just that type of guy to always show up out of the blue and bust in out of nowhere like the Kool-Aid man. He starts to mumble something, and G pulls a gun which triggers the ginger to pull a gun. As the adrenaline pumps through my bloodstream and eventually makes it into my brain, remember the ketamine, I become conscious enough to try and defuse the situation. Get everyone calm enough to put the guns away. They won't let the other kid leave because they don't have a clue who he is. The money that was in the stacks is now all messed up, and the ginger has to recount it. Now since we are fucked up on ketamine and most likely everyone was on Xanax counting that many bills was similar to herding cats. Eventually the other kid, who hadn't taken ketamine so he was relatively sober, helped us believe we had figured it out. In the process to prove someone had stole from me, I had taken out my stash of cash hidden in a sock under the floorboard and added it to the pile on the floor. So at the end of it all the kid had walked in on a kilo of molly, two guns, and over 50 grand in cash. Now the ginger asked to borrow my friend's phone to call his ride. After putting away everything my friend runs up to me and says dude that ginger is going to rob you look at this text dot, the text read something along the lines of. These guys are idiots we can rob the shit out of them. Now I just shrugged it off at the time for two reasons. One I didn't actually think the ginger guy texted that. And two I was too high to care. To this day I don't really know if the ginger guy sent that text or if my buddy typed it out with some strange ulterior motive. Either way I never got robbed and everything ended up okay. Now I ended up with 50 grand in my stash and enough leftover drugs to fuel my friends and I for a while. G asked if he could sleep there that night because he had to wait for someone who could pick him up. I still have nightmares thinking about sleeping with that guy in my apartment in the morning he said, let's go get a smoothie. That was that and he took off. G says he refuses to move more molly unless I get him some bars. Luckily I find that there are legit vendors pumping out bars for cheap out of Canada. Order 10k bars, some green some white. Package gets there pretty much overnight zero problem. Backstory. All the US vendors kept getting popped and in the US if you get caught with a pill, press its federal pound me in the ass prison for a long time. In Canada even if you get caught with a pill press and 100 of thousands of bars, the max sentence is a year or two in Canadian prison. So yes vendors got smart and started to operate out of Canada. Now you may think, what about customs? The thing about customs is they really didn't give a shit about packages coming from Canada, because Canada wasn't a drug exporting country. All packages sent from Canada were basically like it being sent domestically. Tell G I have bars and a lot of them. These guys in Canada were making so much money they didn't even bother counting the bars they would weigh them and just send 50% extra to make sure it was enough. I have no car at the time, so I asked to borrow my roommates to make the drive. 
It's midnight and I'm on the dark roads of the rural northeast in a shitty old beater car. Bam. I slammed into the guardrail on the right and rebounded off of it back on the road. At the time I barely even knew what happened so I got out of the car to check the damage and all I hear is an 18-wheeler laying on the horn coming straight at me. Luckily he was able to swerve and narrowly miss me, I was just standing there in the middle of a dark road thinking holy shit, that could have just as easily been my death. So I get in the car and I keep on driving to the destination. Eventually I make it there and pick G up, and we go to some parking lot, where I open the trunk, where I open a suitcase, to let him check out the stuff. Jesus bro good stuff. Yeah so I got M for pretty cheap I'll have to charge you $2 per, but we can get the price down to $1 per as we keep M coming. Alright cool I'll get the money to you in a week, you want to smoke a joint, sure. I eventually dropped him off, and he took the bag with him. Now for a drive back, the gas tank started to inch its way closer and closer to E, and my phone had already died, it's not like I could call anyone to pick me up anyway at 3am I had no clue where I even was. At this point small snowflakes are starting to fall but I have the heat turned off to conserve what little gas I had left in the tank. I basically accepted the fact that I would be sleeping in the car in the freezing cold that night, at least I had some bars to knock me out. Eventually I see this small gathering of cars up ahead and think what the fuck? I approach them and see they have a giant stack of newspapers. It was about 4 or 5 a.m., and they were all getting ready to deliver papers in the middle of nowhere, never even knew that existed, but one kind lady helped me get back towards the college area. So now I had done everything, gave G the drugs he wanted, and all I had to do was wait for another big payday to come in. Plus I still had 35k or so still in cash left over. What does a 20-year-old do who had been an autist spending 16 hours a day on the computer most of his childhood when he is bored and has a bunch of cash? put out a bunch of drugs and invite over sluts. Eventually just day in and day out we would snort molly, coke, take large amounts of Xanax, and do who knows what. I can tell you we didn't even fuck we were always too fucked up. I basically fell into a terrible lifestyle of emptiness and pushed away my only, somewhat, good friend because he didn't want to party all day and night. Combine this with the come down from abusing the drugs and I eventually lost all hope. One morning something just triggered inside my head, and I knew that I needed to change because my life was melting away before my eyes. It's incredibly hard to wake up the morning after a night of molly and coke without feeling like a complete piece of shit I couldn't even remember the last time I had a decent meal. I started trying to text people to find someone I could go grab a good meal with on me of course, but no one replied it was 2 p.m., and all my friends were only interested in coming to do things with me when they wanted to get fucked up. Eventually I came to the brutal realization that I had absolutely no one who cared about me ironically, this is what gave me my will to fight. I realized that there is so much in the world to experience, and I was giving up all the opportunities in my life for a few dollars and drugs. I made the tough decision to leave the city and moved across the country booked a flight for that night and left all my belongings, except the cash. Not the most exciting ending it was a pretty insane experience going from an autist living on the computer 16 hours a day for 10 years straight to that lifestyle basically overnight. Seriously though biz the moral of the story is a few of us will have substantial wealth in the near future, and many will also have substantial free time. Do not fill this free time with drugs. It may be fun for a day or two, but that's it after that it is unsustainable. Psychedelics can be life-saving in my opinion, but stuff like alcohol, Xanax, opiates, even stimulants to some degree, will just prolong your path towards reaching your life goals. I've been to hell and back and back to hell then back again. No matter where you are now you have the power to obtain the exact life you want. You have the power to become the person you want to be. We are all gonna make it, Brez. The end. Love you faggots.